Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. For those of you new here, hello, my name is Skylar. I am a certified dog trainer and pet nutritionist. Today's video is another rendition of a classic series here on this channel, Pet Nutritionist Ranks. I have already ranked dog kibble and I've already ranked cat kibble, so if you haven't checked those videos out yet, I will go ahead and leave them linked down below, as well as a playlist where you can watch all of my nutritional based content. Now, while I am a pet professional and I do have more pet food knowledge than the average pet owner, for example, I have a couple different certifications in pet food and I've been working in the pet food industry for a handful of years now. These, at the end of the day, are my opinions. You can disagree with them if you'd like. You can take them with a grain of salt. In fact, that's what I'd prefer you do. My main goal with these videos are for you to look more critically at what actually goes into your pet food and become more educated on the ingredients and business practices of pet food brands so that you're better able to make an educated decision on what you want to feed your pet. I'm a big proponent of every pet has their own specific needs and catering to those needs is very, very important. Now, to get off my little soapbox, we'll leave that there. If you are not new to my channel, you've probably heard me mention that kibble was made for the convenience of the consumer, not the optimal health of the pet, and the more meat and moisture that you're able to add to your pet's diet, the better for the most part. That means that whether you're wanting to feed an all wet diet, like the foods that we're going to talk about today, or you just want to incorporate them into the diet to add that meat and moisture, more power to you. That makes me super excited. And this video should be a great jumping off point if you're needing a little bit of help there. All right, now that we've breezed through those disclaimers, let's go ahead and get into our ranking system. So if you've watched my previous two videos, you probably are already very familiar with this chart but I have added little explanations to further explain to you guys why things go in different categories. I do like to make things very analytical. So again, while these are my opinions, I have created criteria that puts things in each category. So in case you're curious as to what those are, I'm explaining them now for you. So pee pee poo poo relies heavily on unnamed meats, meat byproducts, and corn, wheat, or soy. So I'm not a fan of corn, wheat, or soy. When you boil it all down, they're filler ingredients. They hold little to no nutritional value. They're also common pet allergens, so it's best to just avoid them. And then unnamed meats and meat byproducts. According to AFCO, which is the governing body of pet foods, these particular ingredients do not have to come from a slaughtered source. This doesn't mean that any pet companies do use 4D meats, dead, dying, diseased, or down, but it means that according to AFCO, as long as they're labeled as a meat byproduct, it is totally allowed. My issue with unnamed meats as well, such as meat liver or poultry liver, is that it doesn't give us an example of where this actually comes from. So poultry liver, for example, pretty much anything with wings. So it could be duck liver, could be turkey liver, could be chicken liver, but ultimately it's all mixed together and we don't really know. I much prefer named meats such as chicken liver or lamb liver or beef heart, where yes, it's technically a byproduct, but because it's named and not listed byproduct, you know it has to come from a slaughtered source and you know exactly what kind of source that was. Our second category is yucky. These contain unnamed meats, meat byproducts, and or corn, wheat, or soy, but it's more sparingly. It is still, don't get me wrong, in the formula and should be avoided, but it's not the bulk of the food. Moving on up, we have cheers. These are what I consider good entry level foods where maybe you realize you've been feeding a pee pee poo poo or a yucky food and you want to dip your toes into a more nutritionally sound or better ingredient food. So for the cheers category, these products are free of unnamed meats, meat byproducts, and corn, wheat, soy, but they do come from a company that either uses these ingredients, has a significant history of recalls, or has less specific sourcing and ingredient quality. This is a question I got asked a lot in my previous two videos of why I go so hard on companies that are really big, even though the ingredient panel looks good. And what it all basically boils down to is if you're making, for the sake of numbers, 100 bags of dog food, and for that 100 bags of dog food, you have one farm, and that one farm, perfect sourcing, excellent, you've been to the farm yourself, you know everything about the farm, they're really, really great, they treat out their animals well, and that's where you get the food for this 100. 
bags of food. If that 100 bags of food suddenly turns into a thousand bags of food, that one farm isn't able to support them anymore. And the larger a company gets, typically the less specific their sourcing gets. You can also go onto the company's website and typically if they don't have a clear idea of where they get their produce or where they get their meats, that's a red flag for me. Additionally, I'm not gonna be going into brands recall histories in this video, but if off the top of my head, I can think of at least three or four times in the last couple of years where this particular brand has had a recall or their manufacturer has had a recall, that puts another red flag in my mind. So those cheers category foods, typically pretty good ingredients at face value, but once you start getting into more of the sourcing side of things, not always the greatest, but still a great starting point if you're wanting to improve uh, your pet's nutrition. For Oh Hell Yeah, these products are free of unnamed meats, meat byproducts, and corn, wheat, or soy, and they also come from a company with specified sourcing and good ingredient quality. So these are the foods that I personally will recommend. And last but not least, we have Chef's Kiss. This one's actually more of a sister to Oh Hell Yeah, because even though these foods are higher up on the chart. It doesn't necessarily mean that I like them more or that they are better than the foods in Oh Hell Yeah. This chef's kiss category is for things that I find noteworthy based on my personal opinions. So maybe they do something cool that most other brands don't. Maybe they offer a new thing to the market. Um, so that chef's kiss are just things that when I look at their product, I think, sweet, cool, that's new. Now that we have a base understanding of the rating system, we are going to be going into the actual products. Like I mentioned in the beginning of the video, I'm only really gonna be focusing on the first five ingredients. The bulk of a food typically is made up of those first five, which is why I choose to look at them. And also for time's sake, I'm not gonna look at a large ingredient panel with you guys. That would take forever. You will also hear me mention different pet food labeling rules. I'll explain those as we go along to keep you updated. And last, and last but not least, I do mention where or who manufactures these foods because it does play a large part into that recall history and sourcing um, and quality control that we talked about before. First up, we have the Origin Original canned dog food. This is a with rule food. Um, when you see something that says, for example, Origin Original with chicken, turkey, and egg, the with means that each of those labeled ingredients must make up at least 3% of the food. And the first five ingredients are chicken, chicken bone broth, turkey bone broth, chicken liver, and turkey. Origin is made by Champion Pet Foods, which is an independent company, and they do own their own kitchens, which is always cool. If you watched my first video, you probably know all of my hesitations with Origin. In short, they recently started changing their ingredient panel on their dry foods, but their canned foods are brand new, so they haven't changed or decreased quality at all. And I do enjoy their ingredient panel. I have tried their product with my dogs, and I did enjoy it. And I do think that it belongs in the chef's kiss category, just because you don't see very many stews when you start getting up there in the higher end, better quality products. So I do think that this one in particular, especially if you have an old dog that's very particular about texture, this is a good option for you. Next we have Taste of the Wild Wetlands with fowl and gravy. So the with fowl means that fowl must make up 3% of the food. You're gonna catch on to that real fast. And the first five ingredients for this food are duck, duck broth, chicken broth, chicken liver, and chicken. This is another great ingredient panel and I do always prefer a bone broth or a meat broth to just water. The biggest thing that makes this one different from the origin is that Taste the Wild is manufactured by Diamond Pet Foods, which is a very, very large company as you'll quickly realize as we go through this list. And with that comes a lot of recalls and not as specific sourcing. For that reason, Taste the Wild goes in cheers, but again, a totally great option for someone just starting out and experimenting with new foods. Next, we have Zignature. This is Zignature's duck formula. When you see duck formula, duck recipe, duck dinner, duck, any of those words as a descriptor, 
that's what we consider, I call it the recipe rule, and that means that whatever is listed must make up at least 25% of the food. So for example, this one here, duck must make up at least 25% of the finished food. When we look at the ingredient panel, we have duck, duck broth, peas, duck meal, chickpeas, and then it actually just goes straight into vitamins and minerals after that. So it's a pretty limited ingredient food. And Zignature is made by the company Pets Global, which is a smaller independent company that I already know has very great sourcing. For all those reasons, Zignature gets an oh hell yeah. It's a great pate and they have really great ingredients, especially for pets with food sensitivities. Next we have Caesar dog food and this is their lamb recipe. Again, it follows that recipe rule, so lamb must make up at least 25% of the food. The ingredients for the Caesar are lamb, chicken liver, beef lung, chicken broth, and water. And then I did add a sixth ingredient in the parentheses here just to show why I'm putting it where I'm putting it. Um, that sixth ingredient is pork byproduct. So we know that it's pig, but we don't know what it is as far as byproducts go. Um, and it's also made by Mars Inc, which is, as I'm sure you know, very, very large company. But ultimately, because of the pork byproducts in the food, I can't put it any higher than a yucky. All right, next we have Purina Pro Plan. This is the classic adult chicken and rice entree. This one here uses that recipe rule, so chicken and rice combined must make up at least 25% of the formula, and neither one can have less than 3% is the full and complete rule. So first five ingredients for this Purina Pro Plan, we have chicken, water sufficient for processing, liver, meat byproducts, and rice. And then Purina Pro Plan is made by Nestle, which is, again, a very big company. Now there's actually two things in these first five ingredients that I take issue with. First being, it just says liver. I don't know where that liver is coming from. I don't know what kind of animal it's coming from. And it very well probably is a mix of livers. The other issue I have is meat byproducts. Again, we don't know what kind of animal that comes from. We don't know what exactly those byproducts are. And according to AFCO, it could come from sketchy sources. Not saying that Purina uses these sketchy sources, I'm purely just saying, according to AFCO, that's totally fine and legal. So because of the unspecified liver and the unnamed meat byproducts, I'm going to be putting this food in yucky. I, to be totally honest, was going back and forth of where to put it, but since the primary meat is named chicken, we're gonna put it in yucky, but the amount of gray area in some of those ingredients was definitely putting it on that line. Next, we have Merrick Wingling. This one also utilizes the with rule, which means that each ingredient that's listed under with must contain 3% or more of the formula. First five ingredients for this food is chicken, chicken broth, carrots, apples, and peas. Now, Merrick is owned by Purina, so we run into that issue with when you have a bigger company, you potentially have lower quality ingredients or sourcing. Because of that, I am putting it in Cheers. It's still a great food if you're wanting to upgrade to something a little bit better than what you're feeding, or if you're wanting to incorporate wet food into the diet for the first time. But there are definitely options that are gonna be of a little bit of a higher quality. Next, we have Nutrisource, and this is their lamb and rice formula. This one falls under the recipe rule, so the recipe must contain at least 25% of the lamb and rice, and neither ingredient can be less than 3% of the recipe. The first five ingredients for this food are lamb, lamb broth, lamb liver, ocean fish, and brown rice. And we love the lamb liver is specified. Now, Nutrisource is made by KLN Tuffy, which is Nutrisource. It's an independent company. They own their own facility. Between their ingredient panel and their sourcing, Nutrisource gets an oh hell yeah from me. Next, we have First Mate. So this is their cage-free chicken. And the first five ingredients for this food, we have boneless chicken, water for processing, rice, and then it goes straight into the vitamins and minerals. This one's a very limited ingredient food. It also is free of gums and thickeners. So this one here is kind of special in that way. 
First Mate is also an independent company, First Mate Pet Foods, and they're made in Canada, which typically has a higher standard of how their food is made and prepared, specifically their meats, than we do here in the US. I'm a big fan of First Mate, and I do think that it sets them apart that they don't use any thickeners, and so that's why I'm putting it in the Chef's Kiss category. Purina Elpo. So this is their Prime Cuts with Beef formula, and this one here, first five ingredients, we have water sufficient for processing, meat byproducts, poultry, wheat gluten, and soy flour. And then if you look here, I did put the sixth ingredient, which is the beef, in parentheses. I think this one really highlights what I mean when I say the with rule, meaning that beef has to make up at least 3% of the formula, but beef is definitely not a main component of this food. Couple things to point out as far as sketchy ingredients that I don't like to see in my pet's food. First of all, we have meat byproducts. We've talked about them a couple times now. Byproducts are pretty much everything but the main source of meat, so it could be leftover meat, not as good meat. It could be ears, it could be hooves, it could be snouts, it could be a lot of things. They're byproducts. Um, but more importantly, these are also unnamed byproducts, so we don't even know what animal they're coming from. Poultry is another issue poultry, chicken, or turkey, or duck as a label, all perfect, all well and good. But because it's poultry, we can assume it's kind of all just a mix, uh, which again, I take issue with. Wheat gluten and soy flour, like I said, I don't like to see corn, wheat, and soy in my pet's foods. At the bare minimum, they're filler ingredients, they don't hold very much nutritional value, and there's definitely alternatives if you're wanting to bulk up a food. Um, that hold more value than these particular ingredients. Purina Alpo is also, as I'm sure you can figure out, made by Purina Nestle. Um, big company, not great sourcing, and Alpo in general, both their canned food and their dry foods are a great example of the things that you don't want to see in your pet's food. So this one here has to go hands down pee pee poo poo. Next we have Stella and Chewy's Grain Free. This is the Stella's Stew in the grass-fed lamb recipe. Now before we even get into the ingredients, a couple things I just want to point out on the packaging. 100% human grade, it's single source, so if you have a pet with allergies, this is going to be a good option for you. And it's also, right on the packaging, grass-fed. Those little indicators like that, yes, a big part of it is marketing, because, example, I'm excited by seeing the words grass-fed, it makes it seem so much better. But being able to use some of those keywords while there are a lot of negatives to it, and a lot of brands can be kind of skeezy about it, it is worth pointing out when you're looking at quality of meats. So, first five ingredients of this food, we have lamb, lamb bone broth, organic carrots, tapioca starch, and organic kale. Again, the fact that they're able to specifically label their carrots and their kale as organic in the ingredient panel shows some of that quality there. Tapioca starch is a thickener, most wet foods you find do have thickeners. It's usually gar gum or xanthan gum or tapioca starch or something to just make it thick and not runny. Um, so that's what that one is doing in this particular food. And this food is made by Still and Chewies. They're an independent company. For all of the things we just talked about, I'm putting them in the chef's kiss. I think that this is a good option if you're looking for very specific things like I'm looking for a canned stew and I want there to be organic and I want human grade and I want limited ingredient and this is available to me. This is a great option for you. Next we have Royal Canin and I'm also going to be talking about Hill's Science Diet. In this video I'm purely just going to talk about their traditional normal foods. We're not going to go into the whole veterinary food thing. We're just going to look base level at their regular foods. So right here I have Royal Canin Adult, the first five ingredients for this particular food, water sufficient for processing, chicken, pork liver, chicken byproducts, and pork byproducts. Again, we have two examples of byproducts being used, and like I said before, byproducts doesn't tell me anything. If they are of good quality, most brands will typically tell you what kind of byproducts they are. 
Origin and their food is a great example because they do, you look on the back of that packaging and you see things like beef heart or chicken liver or and it's like all the labeled organs, labeled byproducts, whereas these leave me with a lot of questions. Uh, Royal Canin is also made by Mars, again, big company, and overall, looking at the ingredient panel, I'm not thrilled by it, and it does go in the pee pee poo poo category for me. Next, we have Pedigree. This is their choice cuts in gravy with beef, with beef meaning that beef must make up at least 3% of the food. So first five ingredients on the ingredient panel, we have water sufficient for processing, we have chicken, meat byproducts, wheat flour, wheat gluten, and again, that sixth ingredient is the beef. The majority of this food is not even beef. Um, it also does have quite a lot of wheat, which again, more of a filler ingredient, holds very little, if any, nutritional value, and we do have the meat byproducts. I did go ahead and put this food in the pee pee poo poo category because it does use uh, quite a quite a good amount of unnamed questionable meats. Next we have Farmina N and D, and this is their ocean line and the salmon and cod flavor. First five ingredients for this food we have the salmon, cod, herring, sweet potatoes, and herring oil. And Farmina is an independent company out of Italy. What I really like about this particular food is it does offer a fishy flavor. In my experience, these fish flavors, especially just seafood, can be a little bit difficult to find, especially if you have a pet with food sensitivities and this is one of the few things that they can eat without having any reactions. And so because it kind of meets that niche that I don't see too, too often, I did go ahead and put it in the Chef's Kiss. Great brand, great sourcing, and then it does open up that opportunity for people. Next, we have Rachel Ray Nutrish and this is their chicken pot pie recipe. The first five ingredients of this food, we have chicken broth, chicken, dried egg product, egg white, and pea protein. This food does not have any corn, wheat, soy, or byproducts, which I thought was fantastic. I was honestly very surprised by, because if you remember my previous reviews of Rachel Ray's Nutrish line, in general, they do use soy, and I'm not a big fan of soy, but this one, soy free. The only things that I'm not a big fan of would be the dried egg product, because it just says egg product, we don't really know what part of the egg. It could be a whole egg, could be dried egg yolk, could be dried egg white, could be dried egg shells, we don't know. But then this food also has egg white, which gives a perfect juxtaposition of named source, versus unnamed kind of egg. My next issue is the fact that it's pea protein. If it was just peas, that'd be fine, but because it's pea protein in particular, it's alluding to the fact that it's gonna help raise the protein level of the food, uh, which I would much rather see come from a meat source. Overall, I was honestly surprised by this product and put it in the cheers category. I can't put it in yucky. It doesn't have any corn, wheat, soy, or byproducts, and it does offer a better quality than I was expecting. Next we have From, this is their lamb pate. The first five ingredients for this food, we have lamb, lamb broth, lamb liver, pearled barley, and potatoes. From is an independent company, they come from From Family Pet Foods. And overall, this is a great pate option. I did go ahead and put this in the oh hell yeah category. Next we have Kirkland's, this is Costco's own brand. Uh, Nature's Domain, and this is the turkey and pea stew. This one does follow the recipe rule, so at least 25% of the food must be made of turkey and peas, and neither one of those ingredients can have less than 3%. First five ingredients, we have turkey, turkey broth, vegetable broth, natural flavor, and dried egg product. Pea is obviously further down on the ingredient panel and probably closer to that 3% of the recipe, which I'm not mad at. I'm very happy to see a very meat forward food. However, we do have that dried egg product that we talked about in the Rachel Ray food. And this food is also made by Diamond Pet Foods. So again, very big company. A lot of different foods are actually made by Diamond. For example, Diamond Naturals, Taste the Wild, Kirkland, uh, Four Health is made by Diamond. There's a couple others. Overall, they're pretty big pet food company. And between all of their brands, they have had quite a few recalls over the years. And because of that, it goes in the cheers category for me. 
I think it's a great option if you're wanting to incorporate wet food into your pet's diet but aren't able to spend a ton of money. I know Costco's whole thing is being bulk and money saving. Um, so this would be a potential option for you. All right, we got Hill's Science Diet. This is the chicken and barley entree for adults ages one to six. First five ingredients for this food, we have water, chicken, pork liver, whole grain corn, cracked pearled barley, and then I also included the sixth ingredient, which is beef byproducts, just to help give a little bit more context to why I put it where it went. Now at this point, we've talked about byproducts quite a bit, so I hope at this point you understand my concern and my reservations when I see byproducts. So let's talk about corn for a second. So corn in general, because of a bunch of different factors of basically humans intervening with food, Corn has lost a lot of the nutritional value that it once had, so now it's mostly used in pet food as a filler. On top of that, corn processes in a dog and cat's body very similar to how a small child processes sugar. And just like when you give a little kid a pixie stick, studies are showing that dogs that have a diet high in natural sugars, such as corn, have more behavior problems associated with them because of what they're eating. There's a whole bunch of reasons why I'm not a fan of corn, but here's another reason why. Overall, between the presence of corn and the beef byproducts, I am putting this in the pee pee poo poo category. Next, we have Beneful, and this is the chicken stew flavor. This also uses the with rule, so each of the listed ingredients where it says with must be, you know, 3% at least of the formula. First five ingredients are chicken broth, chicken, wheat gluten, liver, and meat byproducts. Again, we don't know where this liver is coming from, we don't know where this meat byproduct is coming from. Those are all red flags to me. And then Beneful is made by Purina Nestle, which again, big company, less specific sourcing typically, and all those reasons, mostly the unnamed meats. It's going in pee pee poo poo. And that was my canned dog food tier list. Of course, I could not cover every single food under the sun. There are just so many, but I do hope that I gave you a wide enough range that you're at least able to take some of the information and analysis skills that I used in this video and apply it to whatever your food. But I do hope that this gave you enough examples and enough range to then be able to look at the ingredients of the food that you're currently feeding, analyze those ingredients, and then be able to make a decision based on what you know now of whether or not you should stick with the food, or you should maybe think about changing, or how you want to proceed. My biggest goal here on my channel is to give you just a ton of information so that way you're better equipped to make decisions that you think are right for you and your dog. Every dog's different, every household is different, and being able to make those educated decisions helps to empower you as a dog owner to then take better care of your pack. Please give this video a like and subscribe if you haven't already. I do have a lot of nutrition and training information on this channel. I think it's a pretty good resource. Let me know if you think so as well. If you have any questions or foods that you would like me to review or discuss in the future, be sure to leave those down below in the comments. I'm also going to be doing a cat canned food tier list here pretty soon, as well as a raw food tier list here pretty soon. So if you have any foods that you would like to see for those specifically, again, leave those down in the comments below so I can try to get as many suggestions from you guys as possible. You can also follow me on Instagram. I do have two Instagrams, first of which is Top Dog Behavior. That's more of my business training side of things. Uh, you can definitely follow me there but most of my YouTube stuff and personal stuff is on my personal Instagram and that's tattooed.dogtrainer. You can follow me there if you would like. Like I said, I will link below the two original tier list ranking videos for you to check out if you have not already. There's a cat kibble one and a dog kibble one, as well as any other videos that I think are really great to see if you are new to this channel. And that is pretty much it. I will see you guys in my next video, and until then, bye!